My name is Brian Nichols. I'm a livestock consultant here at the Noble Foundation. I'm going to share with you the first year of a study that we're doing down at the Red River Farm uh, with stalker cattle on wheat pasture. The reason that we're able to do this project is because this piece of equipment that you see in the picture, it's called a grow safe beef system. And so traditionally when we've had to monitor weights on cattle, we have had to gather them, run them through the chute, gather a weight, put them back on pasture. And so very time consuming and so typically we would have very few weights over a time period of a study. But now that we have this piece of equipment, any time that cattle come up to take a drink of water or we can place a mineral block in this, in this setup and we gather a weight every single time that happens. So we're able to track the weights of these cattle a lot more precisely and accurately over time than what a traditional system would allow us to do. When we turn cattle out onto wheat pasture, we typically see a drop in performance or what we'll call a slump right when they go out onto wheat. This was a, a set of cattle a couple of years ago at the Noble Foundation back in 2013. Over here on the left side of the graph, this is when these cattle are in a dry lot, a preconditioned dry lot situation. You can see uh, gain going up. And then right at this point is where we turn them out onto wheat pasture. And at that point in time, they drop about 20 pounds. And in, in about a weekend, then they finally start to gain weight again. The red line right here indicates a two pound average daily gain. So if cattle are on wheat, if they're gaining less than two, I'm not calling that very successful. And so when we get out here to about day 21, they finally achieve a two pound average daily gain. So in that first 21 days, not doing too well, they finally pick back up and, and take off. So our question is, what can we do about this time period in here? Is there something that we can do that will uh, help them through that slump period, maybe remove the slump, and if we can do that, does that end up with heavier weights in the end? So if we look back at some of the literature that's uh, work that's been done, uh, Dr. Horn and Dr. Phillips at Oklahoma State did this back in 2008, and the main driver of this decreased performance is decreased intake. We turn them out on wheat pasture, it's a new, it's a new feed to them, uh, intake goes down, and so performance suffers until they can get back on the feed. Uh, Dr. Beck in, in University of Arkansas did some work looking at different backgrounding diets uh, to maybe remedy this. And one thing that he looked at was either feeding hay plus 20% cubes, which would be termed a pretty traditional strategy of, of low gain before we go out on the wheat pasture, or they program fed a high concentrate ration. Program feeding is simply limit feeding a ration at less than, than ad libitum intake. And, uh, and it typically is a very efficient way to feed cattle. So in the first 41 days after they turn these cattle out onto wheat pasture, the cattle that were on 20% cubes gained 0.7 pounds a day. The cattle that were program fed gained about 1.4 pounds a day. So he's showing there that, that with the backgrounding diet, we may be able to have some impact on how these cattle gain there in that short period after we turn them out. So what are some of the holes in this literature? First of all, program feeding is really not a widely implemented practice in this area. We don't have a, a lot of folks that have the ability to put together total mixed rations and program feed cattle. Second is, if I haven't been able to find any data that shows continuing that feeding from backgrounding onto wheat pasture to see if we can you know, ease those cattle onto the onto wheat pasture and that adaptation. So if, we're, if we do that, my question is, can we solve the decreased intake issue that we see and, and solve the slump in those cattle. The other thing that I pointed out earlier is that most, of this, most data that's been done on this is collected on 14-day intervals, whereas now we're able to collect it on a daily basis. So the study we put together is with weaned uh, heifer calves from the Noble Foundation. There's three treatments. All these cattle were offered hay-free choice because that's typically what we see in this area. And so we decided to go with 1% of, uh, of their body weight in a byproduct feed supplement. Once we turned them out on the pasture, we did not offer any supplement. This would be a very traditional uh, program in this area. Then we upped that to feeding them 2% of their body weight in a byproduct feed. No supplement once they went on to pasture. Or we fed them 2% of their body weight. And once we turned them out on the wheat, we continued to feed that supplement for the first 21 days that they were on pasture. So we'll go through the, the first year's results that we saw. Um, we had a pretty terrible wheat pasture fall last fall, and so these cattle ended up being backgrounded for about 80 days. 
Uh, during that backgrounding period, we had 1.2 average daily gain on the 1% cattle, and then 1.91 and 1.73 on the cattle that were um, fed 2% of body weight. So as we would expect, cattle that were fed more gained more. That, that uh, translated into heavier weights for the cattle that were fed 2%. Once we turned them out on pasture, we had about a 60-pound uh, increase in, in turnout weight for the cattle that were fed 2%. While they were on pasture, this was about a 50-day period, we saw a huge compensatory gain response from the cattle that were just fed 1%. We, we would expect to see that. What I didn't expect to see is a three and a half, a heifer gaining three and a half pounds a day. Pretty impressive average, average daily gain for a heifer. So this is the reason a lot of people tend to feed less during that preconditioning period is to capture this compensatory gain response. The cattle that were fed 2% with no supplement gained 2.6 pounds a day. The cattle that were fed 2% and also fed on wheat pasture for the first 21 days gained uh, not quite three pounds a day. So they actually fell into line as to what we would kind of expect. Thing to remember though is that although we did see this increase in compensatory gain, those cattle did not catch up to the ones that were fed more during backgrounding. And so I think this is a pretty key take home point is that even though they may have a, a very good average daily gain, it's important to always budget exactly what these cattle are gonna do and do a budget on your entire scenario. Don't just do it on, I'm wanting to get the most average daily gain on wheat pasture. So the last variable I wanna show you, and I'll show you this graph first to remind you this red line is a two pound average daily gain. And so at this point, 21 days in, those cattle are gaining two pounds a day. So my, my question is, were these diets, did they have an effect on how quickly we got to two pound average daily gain? We're able to get that data now because we have the growth safe system to do that, okay? So if we look at how many days, how long did it take them to reach two pound average daily gain, the cattle that were fed 2% with no supplement took them almost a month. So they had an inc a, very, a much longer slump period than the cattle that were fed either 1% or 2% with the supplement. Now, it didn't work out exactly like we thought because I was thinking that this big bar would be the cattle that were fed 1% based on Dr. Beck's earlier research. But um, inter interesting to see uh, and we'll continue to follow this. So what's next? Um, we're in the second year of this trial right now. It'll wrap up this spring. We're gonna add that in the, the really good thing about this year is it was a more normal fall. We had tremendous wheat pasture production. We were able to turn out a lot more cattle and we were back to what we would consider a normal preconditioning period, which is about 45 days prior to wheat pasture turnout. So stay tuned, uh, we'll, we'll put this data together and we'll be able to share it with you into the future. Thank you.